welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Closer Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is the perfect December poem. It is a poem that was written toward the end of 1900 in December of 1899 and was first published in a magazine dated December 29th, 1900. It's by Thomas Hardy and it's called The Darkling Thrush. He lived from 1840 to 1928. And as William Harmon mentions in his anthology, The Classic Hundred Poems, Thomas Hardy was a poet whom Ezra Pound, John Crow Ransom, W.H. Owen, Dylan Thomas, and Philip Larkin all look to as an influencer in their own work. Among many readers, Thomas Hardy can be thought of as a depressing poet. So I will be curious to know if you think that this, The Darkling Thrush, is a depressing poem. This is how it goes. I linked upon a coppice gate when frost was specter gray, and winter's dregs made desolate the weakening eye of day. The tangled bind stems scored the sky like strings of broken lyres, and all mankind that haunted nigh had sought their household fires. The land's sharp features seemed to be the century's corpse outlent, his crypt the cloudy canopy, the wind his death lament. The ancient pulse of germ and birth was shrunken, hard, and dry, and every spirit upon earth seemed fervorless as I. At once a voice arose among the bleak twigs overhead, in a full-hearted even song of joy illimited. An aged thrush, frail, gaunt, and small, in blast beruffled plume, had chosen thus to fling his soul upon the growing gloom. So little cause for carolings of such ecstatic sound was written on terrestrial things afar or nigh around that I could think there trembled through his happy good night air some blessed hope whereof he knew and I was unaware. So what do you think? Is that depressing? The term that I've read in connection with Thomas Hardy is unhope. I believe it's from one of his other poems. But do you think this is a hopeless poem? I'm not sure I do. It's certainly, in many ways, bleak. There's something ghostly about it, right? He's constantly alluding to that. He uses words like specter, specter gray, winter's dregs, desolate, weakening, tangled bind stems scored the sky like strings of broken lyres. So there's a sense of brokenness, of being broken down. You know, the things that you think about when you live in a place that's cold and winter has been lingering or is beginning to truly take over. But then, in the midst of that, appears this thrush, right? And I'm fascinated by the fact that it is an aged thrush, an aged thrush. It's frail, it's gaunt, and small. It's also producing a sound of joy illimited that rises among the bleak twigs. It's full-hearted. And he flings that upon the growing gloom. And you can't help but think about Thomas Hardy looking at the century that has passed, looking at it with, you know, some sense of despair, but also looking at what's coming and and hoping for uh, something better. Now, that didn't come to fruition, so his pessimism maybe was rightly placed. But even here where he has this pessimism, there's this sense that perhaps there's something worth being hopeful for that he's not fully aware of, that he's not fully privy to, that he can't quite put his finger on. And maybe that's true for all people, even in the darkest of times. So one more time, this is Thomas Hardy's The Darkling Thrush, one of the the great poems for December, I think. I leaned upon a coppice gate when frost was specter gray, and winter's dregs made desolate the weakening eye of day. The tangled bind stems scored the sky like strings of broken lyres, and all mankind that haunted nigh had sought their household fires. The land's sharp features seemed to be the century's corpse outleant. His crypt the cloudy canopy, the wind his death lament. The ancient pulse of germ and birth was shrunken hard and dry, and every spirit upon earth seemed fervorless as I. At once a voice arose among the bleak twigs overhead in a full-hearted even song of joy illimited. 
an aged thrush, frail, gaunt, and small, in blast beruffled flume, had chosen thus to fling his soul upon the growing gloom. So little cause for carolings of such ecstatic sound was written on terrestrial things, afar or nigh around, that I could think there trembled through his happy good night air some blessed hope, whereof he knew, and I was unaware. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another one. <laughs>